This video is proudly sponsored by that nice old lady in the street who sold me this uh, nice cup of dessert tofu. She's really good. Uh, if you're wondering, by the way, I'm not vegan. So in today's video, we're taking a look at making this sort of wave animation that's been really popular uh, for about the last two years. I think this uh, is one of those animation that's pretty much synonymous with uh, tutorial animation. So yeah, uh, we're gonna take a look at how we can improve on it and adding more details to it to make it look, to make it look better, more beautiful, uh, so to speak. So yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so you're probably aware of the uh, really popular wave warp thing. Yeah, but you know, if you pay attention, it's been going everywhere. And it's uh, a pretty basic setup, actually. I'm gonna create a new shape layer, go ahead of the polygon tool, double click on the polygon. I'm gonna disable the stroke a little bit. Yeah, I'll leave it white like this. And then I'm gonna drop the polystar point to three and increase the size of it maybe like so we can do it sideways as if it's coming from the left side of the screen so we can rotate it uh, 90 degree bring down the length and bring up the height and move it to the middle yeah so this is gonna be the basis of our wave i'm gonna pre-compose it and call it the uh, wave comp and inside of this wave comp, I'm just gonna align the wave a little bit to make it, uh, to make the whole thing sit in the center. Cause that's gonna be crucial later on in the process. Just in this wave number one. Here comes the uh, secret sauce. I'm gonna type in wave warp and I'm gonna uh, drag it into our wave layer over here. Boom, we're gonna dig, that, uh, dig deeper into the wave warp. Uh, over here we got the height and the width of the wave. Right now we're just gonna drag the wave, drag the width a little bit out and the direction. So 90 degree is that the wave is moving horizontally to the right side of the screen and minus 90 is moving horizontally to the left side of the screen and uh, wave speed over here is, indicates how fast the wave is going to be moving to that direction. So yeah, basic stuff. Uh, for the sake of this example, I'm going to put the uh, wave direction to minus 90 degree and then i'm gonna drop down the content of the polystar path right click and convert it to a bezier path and i'm gonna drag the tip of the uh, of the shape to the edge of the composition here wow why did i do that because uh, it's because of the pinning uh, option over here we can uh, with this one you can actually pin the either the left edge or the right edge of the shape and uh, whichever edge it decides to uh, pin is actually based on the composition and not uh, where the uh, actual layer uh, of the effect is. You know? So that's something to look out for. And now I'm going to pin the right edge. Yeah, so uh, at this point we can pretty much play with the wave a little bit. I'm going to drag down the speed, customize it to however you like. Oh, I'm gonna exit out to the first composition. In this wave comp, I'm gonna add in a mirror effect. Boom. What you're gonna do is drag the center of the reflection over here, which is this point right here, to the center of the screen, which should be uh, where the usual center of every single layer are. 960 and 540, yeah. And reflection angle, we can drop that to 90 degrees. I'm gonna play it back. It's, it's gonna be a lateral force wave. Can we get uh, some sort of overlap here between the edge? I think that's because the edge is not the uh, tip of the layer. It's not entirely touching the edge of the composition. So we need just to drag it out a little bit more. Let me make sure it doesn't move. And then we can drag it down a little bit further, like so. There we go. Wait. 
So we get our wave set up. I think it comes now to the exciting part of the tutorial where we add more things into it. I think this is where most waves that you see in, uh, in the motion graphics project stands out is that they get a variety of elements and variety of color into them. So I'm gonna change the color of this wave. We're gonna consult my library panel over here for some beautiful colors that we're gonna go with. Uh, something that would get me a lot of views. I think this one is good. Uh, yeah, I'll go with that. I'll have my wave uh, start out with the basic blue. I'm gonna copy it, make it wave two, and kind of gonna put a stroke on that. Make it a thin stroke like so. Uh, disable the fill option, and then I'm gonna change the temp intensity of the wave and the speed of the wave so that it looks like it has some sort of variety in it. We're gonna always just head in the uh, layer styles to put some more color variety inside of the shape. So I'm gonna go with the basic inner glow. Jesse, we need some inner glow, Jesse. Bring up the size a little bit. Let's try some overlays, see how it looks. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like the subtle overlay more. Bring up the size, choke it up a little bit, like so. I think we need a, another big one where it's just moving a lot slower. I'm gonna make it uh, red and bring down the size of it a little bit. Like so, and increase the uh, width of the wave. Put up the wave height a little bit. Uh, probably just kidding, we can add something a little bit warmer. Maybe a color, a gradient overlay. Gonna edit that gradient for it to have this sort of orange tint inside of it. And this one can stay, uh, can stay white. Put it to overlay. Now we got this uh, this pretty warm, exciting color inside of it. Gonna bring down the speed of the wave, and then, voila, we have this look. Uh, you know what? I'm actually gonna put the uh, the red wave over here on top of the white lines. Yeah, I don't want the white lines to be too solid. I'm gonna drop the white lines down a little bit. It's just about four pixels, and then. I'm gonna take the first layer, duplicate it, put it on top. I'm gonna pick a sort of a yellow color. And I'm gonna change the blending mode. Pretty hot takes here, but I kind of like how the uh, how the lines over here it's turning yellow as soon as it touches the wave. It's all thanks to the uh, thanks to the blending mode. This is uh, this is dark darker color by the way. And see if we if there's any difference if we change the height a little bit like so. That looks, yeah, that looks very nice. And it's just a sort of magic that it comes when you combine a lot of things together. I'm also gonna drop the speed down a little bit, maybe 1.6. We get a we get a nice overlap of the wave, maybe 1.1. Yeah, we can also add some more subtle details to it, like uh, copying the uh, lines over here. I'm gonna put it on top. Uh, still keeping the white color and then I'm gonna jump into the line make the uh, strokes uh, a sort of a wave themselves so we get dashes we get a bunch of options we get dashes taper and a wave I'm gonna turn them into waves for oh wait we can we cannot see the waves yeah there we go and I'm gonna drop down the size of the gonna drop down the size of the shape a little bit it merely happens uh, within the waves uh, decrease the speed and increase the width I enjoy most about this part of the process of designing and animating because it's just involves a lot of playing around digging through what makes the composition works best and I think that's the part that I enjoy the most uh, increase the wavelength a little bit and then that's pretty much it for the waves inside the waves we got something that looks like this that's looking very good very nice actually I'm just gonna pick a different color maybe a light purple like this looks very dreamy this looks like something out of an anime I'm gonna try a little bit of bevel and, uh, and emboss on the thick uh, red one here, see if it's improved this look a little bit. I'm really having trouble speaking in English right now, if you can't tell. Uh, yeah, this white looks good. 
when I make it uh, blue or something like that subtle thing that pokes out subtle, subtle bit of the color the neo light looks good soften it up bring up the size I don't think we need to bother with the shadow over here because we're not gonna be able to see it anyway uh, that blue is a little bit too hard on the edges I'm gonna bring the blue down a little bit just ever so slightly and we can also engage with this layer by adding more distortion effects onto it I'm gonna go with something like a mesh warp and I'm assuming you already know what mesh warp, uh, how mesh warp works I'm gonna put the rows into two bring down the columns a little bit I'm gonna make it three then drag these two out to the sides either of the sides over here increase the sort of pinning of the shape bring this in as well these two sides in so that's a little bit of a more unorthodox shape i like how the two strands over here provide a sort of a constant constant contrast whoa contrast between the, the thick shapes in the, the back and uh, you know what, I bet it. These are also gonna look good with some grains on it, so I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. Uh, put in the basic grain, a preview to final output. And as you can see, it's improved the look quite a lot. Gonna drop the intensity down just a smidge. 0 0.6 and decrease the size as well to 0 0.3. There we go looking very nice indeed and after a while waiting uh, this is what we got right here uh, our uh, final product yeah i really enjoy how this is looking and i'm pretty sure i enjoy the whole process of doing it as well i think most of the tutorials i enjoy include some sort of experimentation or permutating uh, some uh, some aspects of the look of the object but yeah i also hope but yeah, I also hope that you guys enjoy the process as well and uh, catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Okay, so hold it right there. I, ju I actually just uh, thought of something pretty fun. So we're gonna duplicate the uh, first layer over here, our base layer, uh, this one. And I'm gonna, gonna color this row uh, something uh, bright, maybe white. Uh, disable the fill. And I'm gonna put that beneath uh, wave number one. Uh, decrease the uh, size of the stroke just a little bit like this. Uh, our idea is having a little bit, creating a little bit of edge so that uh, it looks like it has some sort of a highlights between the waves. And uh, what I'm going to do is actually drop down, move the waves down like this probably increasing the wave width a little bit so that it's uh, it's offsetting is being offset between the between the shapes like this so we have uh, like a sort of uh, foam on the wave you know if you would imagine that's really nice so look at this from the side and I'm gonna put the color to this color but it's brighter like so and change up the hue of it be brighter to this side that's it that looks so nice yeah so now the waves the original wave looks like it has some sort of highlights on the side and that looks pretty cool and it's, uh, let's uh, just brighten the color up a little bit more a bit foamy color like this that's so cool boom and now we have our final finish look of the wave so yeah, that's about it. Uh, see you actually this time.